we doing? How we doing? Oh yeah, baby. I'm super, I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. And I can't tell you, for literally the last three months, I was dreaming about this day, about this minute, about this hour that's right now here. And I, I'm pumped more than you are. You pumped more than I am. Are we both pumped together? You see, we all have control. We all have control. Please, if we can just be a little silent. We all have control over what's going to happen today. In our own lives, we all have control over what's going to happen today and in this given moment. And I'll tell you something. I didn't wake up today all super pumped up, excited, uh, just because I, I got a ton of sleep last night or I wake up every single day just super excited to live another day. Every single person, I promise you, whether they're extremely successful, getting on their way to success, has an opportunity every single day to switch around how they currently feel, the state of their mind, how they currently feel right now, and get to a better place. Remember when we were talking about my obsession when I was back there and I was saying, how many people in here believe? How many people in here believe that there's a better life that exists for them? Everybody put up their hand. See, there's something about me, and I'm going to share a story with you, a little bit about myself and how I actually came to find my voice. I'm not talking about the one I'm almost about to lose. <laughs> but how I, became, how I actually found my voice, and it's crazy. How many in here like to party? Put your hands up. Be honest. And when I say party, I don't mean the crazy party. I mean just go out, have a good time, and obviously party. <laughs> okay, well, same here. And I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you guys. Other side? You just flip it around. Oh, it's probably going to. I'll do that in a second. I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about myself and where I came from, why I do what I do today, and hopefully it can inspire, because the reality is it's not going to inspire everybody right now. It's typically until something happens in your life that you become ready to take yourself from where you're at today and say, you know what, I'm ready to climb that ladder that David was talking about. And I have to, not want to, not just want to or not just, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to. I have to make a change in my life. Now the reason why you're going to get to a point of I have to is because you get so damn sick. So damn sick of being where you're at and knowing and seeing that there are other people that have what you want and you just don't have it quite yet. And when you see that and say, why they can have all that? Why they can do this? Why are they waking up happy? Why? 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 Till you finally get in the back of your head like, why them and not me? And you know, if they can do it, so can I. You start to give up some of the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that take you back in your life and start moving you forward to where you want to become. So to start, I basically back, I'll go all the way to when I was a kid growing up in what I call over there elementary school, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys have well, you, the same name out here where it's called elementary. So I'm talking from grade, but you do. Okay, so when I was in elementary school, people who typically are, are giving motivational speeches and stuff like that, I noticed a similar, uh, a lot of similar stories of theirs about, you know, they had nothing, they came from nothing, and then they came and rose to the top. I'm going to tell you guys a different story, okay? But it leads in my timeline of what they accomplished and what, of what they went through. My timeline's a little bit different, but it shares a similar story. I grew up with wealthy parents. Wealthy. I'm talking, we had, you know, well, a lot of you, some of you may not, you're too young, but back in the day where there was Pac-Man, uh, where you sit side by side, and they, you put 25 cents and, uh, in, in the machine, and you're able to, to play the arcades back then, well, my parents, when I grew up, and just back in our hometown, of Ed, where I was born and raised, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, my parents had one of these huge restaurants, and I'll tell you, the place was always packed, money was coming in, everything was awesome, life was great. Why? Because... When I went to school in elementary, and 
I just noticed my personality was always one just within me to give to others, to help other people have and enjoy a fun life in general. So when I'm in school and my dad would come at lunchtime to take me out for lunch, I would always be like to my friends and, uh, and uh, people in my class, like, hey, you want to come with me today? And my dad would, of course, be like, yeah, no worries. Bring anybody you want. Just make sure it's okay with their parents. And back then, it wasn't like it is now. It's like, yeah, you know, Paul, let's just go to lunch. Nowadays, things have changed. Things are a little different. You got to get permission from, you got to get, you know, there's so much more. But I'll tell you something. Just being able to have what I want when I wanted it was the best feeling in the world. And then also on top of it, when I had, when I had birthdays, when I had birthdays at my, my, like when my birthday happened each year and it was during school, well, my dad would actually, believe it or not, come bring cake and because we had a restaurant, food and everything for the whole class. And literally, it was the best feeling in the world to be in the spotlight, but also to be giving back to everybody. And I'll tell you, the school I went to was filled with immigrants. My parents were immigrants. It was filled with immigrants and people who didn't have much to start off with when they're coming over to Canada. They didn't have much. So to them, it was like, wow, here they are, you know, this family who actually came from, uh, from, from having quite a bit to be able to give. It was the best feeling in the world. So even at times, what we would do is the, literally, when it was my birthday, the whole school would take off that day. They would bring them over to my restaurant, my parents' restaurant, and it was the best feeling in the world to just see everybody having fun. At a young age myself, it was just the best feeling to see people happy, and it gave me that sense of gratification. That's just me. But guess what? We lost it all. My parents lost it all. You see, that same restaurant was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And my dad didn't believe in hiring other people because if we hired other people, what would happen? There'd be so much theft, there'd be so much, he attached so much negativity to hiring other people at that business that he and the family, my mom, my dad, my uncle, yes, three people, ran a 24 hour a day, seven days a week business. So what do you think happened over time? With my parents, absolutely you bet they fought. They fought, that so much happened, I was really young, but guess what, they got divorced. And when they got divorced, we lost everything. My parents had a really nice, beautiful house as a kid. We had it all paid off, cash and everything. But I'll tell you a story that I never shared ever before. We had a house that was paid off cash, and guess what my, my father did? My father did not want to go back and forth with my mom getting half, and my mom and dad didn't want it. It was just a nightmare. So he gave it away to the bank for free. He gave a full house away to the bank for free. And as I was aging, I'm thinking, I'm like, why would he do this? Until today, I kind of don't know the full story of what happened, but all I can tell you is they worked themselves to literally the bone where they forgot the number one thing in life and that's time we all have a limited amount of time in our lives what's guaranteed chris lou said death and taxes so when we lost everything me we went to school and the business was done the business was gone the house was gone this these, these happy faces of being able every single day to, hey, you want to come to lunch with me? Wait a second, slowly slipped away. For me, I came from wealth, but we lost it. And my whole life growing up as a kid, I'm like, wait a second. So I want that back because I had a taste of that pie. And that pie tasted good. And I'll tell you, it's a little different of a timeline because when I went from having and being able to provide to not being able to, even as a, as a, as a child, I knew that was 100% something that I had to rebuild for myself. So what did I do? I obviously went and I knew, and back then I had to obviously get my education, graduate, and uh, I went, decided to start off 
with comp- uh, back then I, I obviously loved playing games as a, as a kid, kind of all, even in my high school days. And uh, right when uh, Descent, the game Descent, Duke Nukem, if you remember those, those games, me and my buddy would actually play. We'd, we'd uh, uh, buy computers and, and hook them up through the uh, internet back then, which is anybody know what a 24-4 modem is or a 56K modem is? Dial up. Anybody, anybody not know what the heck I'm talking about? You guys know? Yeah, that shit sucks. That's right. Why? Because my dad didn't know how, instead of studying, I was on my computer playing Descent with my buddy Mike um, clear across Edmonton. And what happens when he's like, I need to call my brother. Right? You guys remember that? So you pick it up, and I'm like, no, I was just about to find him and kill him. You got to be kidding me. I was just about to find him and kill him, and all of a sudden, it gets disconnected. So, long story short, I, I decided, hey, you know what I'm going to do with myself as I graduate? I'm like, I'm going to go to university, and I'm going to take computer science. Why? Because computer science, you're able to program and all this stuff to use computers because I want to make games. Well, I'll tell you something. I went into that, and me personally, I'm not a school person, okay? I know I have to do it. I got to push myself because if I graduated, I would end up making a lot of money and rebuilding what I wanted, okay? So I went into that. My first semester, I would go into class bright and early in the morning, Yes, over in Canada, it gets to like literally minus 30 with wind chills, minus 60. I'd be walking to school, freezing cold, and I would actually go into class literally for eight hours straight and then have a three-hour lab where I'm coding. And I'm thinking to myself, I like playing games. I like playing games. I don't like coding. I had no idea, but I did not like coding. So I go to my dad. I'm like, Dad, you know what? This is not for me. He's like, oh, you're crazy. What are you talking about? And my dad is an engineer, a master's engineer, and he's all about education. So he goes to me, he's like, are you crazy? You got to stick in with it. You got to keep going. I'm like, but it's not something I like. So I decided to drop out of that in my first semester. I said, you know what? Dad, you were a businessman. You were successful at one point. But you know what I'm going to do instead? What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on what I like to do. And then in, as I actually grow in that, which ultimately became business, but as I grow with that, what I'm going to be able to do is hire somebody who can actually take on this role. He's like, that sounds great. Anyways, back to school tomorrow. I got to get to work. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, maybe you didn't. (laughs) So what I did was I literally dropped out of that. And my big thing is I've always been very careful with time. So my first semester, I dropped out of it. And I'm like, shoot, now as much as I hate school and I know I got to get it done, now, unfortunately, I'm behind. And that sense of being behind lights a fire under my ass and I swear, I'm like, I got to do something. So I called my cousin who was at the border of the Michigan border. So anybody ever cross into Windsor? No? Okay, that's the border of Michigan. So I called him and I'm like, dude, the school's over here. There's nothing uh, that that I can do to pick up my actual schooling uh, for, for the semester. I go... I remember you told me there was some type of program where I could actually start second semester, but do my first semester, and then pick up my second semester in the summer. And if it all worked out, I could actually just go straight through to truck through my education and finish it. So he goes, absolutely, we can check. And I called up the school, and uh, lo and behold, they had that program. So what would typically take about four to five years to get a business degree, I actually completed it in three, trucking through it. I'm talking semester one, semester two, and then in the summertime, it was semester one of this next year, and then semester two in the first, they had an awesome program, and then again, all throughout, no breaks, no breaks. So I went into business, and then my major was marketing. And what happened was, and I swear on everything, my last class before I was about to graduate, I got a phone call from my parents back in in, in Edmonton saying, your grandma's about to pass away. And I had a decision to make. I'm like, do I sit here and finish my education? Or do I go and see my my grandma who's about to pass away, which I'll never obviously, again, time, right? What's guaranteed death? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. And I'm going to walk up to my, my, the dean I'm going to let them know that I'm going. And I don't care if I got to do the semester again because the one thing I cannot take back is definitely that, is, is having that chance to, to see her. 
So I walk up to the dean. I go, dean, this is my situation. This is what's going on. My last class was accounting. It was an accounting class. You know what he told me? He said, Paul, you've been doing amazing. You've been doing awesome. Just go. And I'm like, how about the final exam? He goes, I'll send it to you. And I still, to this day, I've never heard of that. He goes, you know what? I'll send it to you. And you can write it from there. But if you can give me your, 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 the honesty that you're not going to cheat, you're not going to open the book, that you can write it on your time and send it back to me. And I did that. I did that. And uh, everything was, went through, everything was well, and I had graduated. But a, 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 in that time period when I was in schooling, I liked to party, okay? I liked to party. Now, this is my story about my party situation and how I found my voice. So, I would like to party, and I was the guy, too, in, like, certain classes that, you know, I would show up late and whatnot. And this one marketing uh, teacher... He would all the time be like, oh, it's Paul again. He's showing up late. And he had a vendetta against me. He, he wanted to get me. He was out to get me. And lo and behold, there was this one day where I show up to class late. And he goes, uh, all right, everybody, you know, uh, tuck your, your, your books underneath. Who's ready to do their presentation? And I'm like, oh, well, who's ready to do their presentation? I look over to my friends. And my friends are like, dude, today's the day where we present in front of their class. And this is worth like... 60% of your marks, your grades. I'm like, are you kidding me? Present what? He's like, seriously? You're not listening. Again, I hated school. I trucked through it. But he goes, this is worth like 60% of your grades. I'm like, oh my God, in front of everybody? Believe it or not, this guy who you see up here right now, I was an introvert. I was scared shitless to be up in front of a group. And the class was, was a little bit like double the size, close to about almost double the size in the room right now. And guess who the teacher picks? He was out to get me. Paul, get on, come on up. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, no worries. So I'm delaying time. I'm putting myself, please tell me a little bit more. Tell me a little bit more. I remember her name was Georgiana. I'm like, Georgiana, what are we supposed to, remember you're supposed to have a business and talk about a business plan and your business and yada, 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 right away inside my head. And I didn't know that I had this talent hidden deep within myself. But right away, my brain goes, yeah, I recall, since I'm in business, I always wanted to open up and own a salon. I wanted to open up a salon. I wanted to make people happy. I wanted to make people feel good. And I wanted to, this was my dream, to have this big salon. So what did I do? Inside my head, and this will help a lot of you find your voice. Inside my head, I pictured I already won. I already owned a salon. This is crazy, but I didn't know. I already owned a salon. So as I get up in front of everybody, hey everybody, welcome. And I kind of cheated a bit because my best friend's mom owned a salon and it was called Anava Spa. So I go up and I'm like, and they don't know because it's even a different city. So I'm like, my, yeah. So I'm like, uh, I just want to let you guys and everybody know and welcome to my, um, hello and welcome to my business, Anava Spa. And I start going into it and I'm like, we do blah, blah, blah. And I started going into it. Long story short, I swear on everything, I nailed it. The presentation, I nailed it. I found out a couple things about me. For me, I am not a scripted person. I'm not scripted. If I script stuff, I screw up. I am not a choreographer by any means. I am not good at, at, at choreography. But I'm very good at freestyling. Very good at freestyling. So I'm very good at just getting what's inside my head and dumping it on and to other people, and that's how I basically found when I came up. The teacher actually goes, everybody was, gave me a round of applause, and everything was awesome. The teacher goes, I have to be honest, Paul, first of all, I called you out, and I knew, I'm like, I know, but I, I called you out because I thought you, are, you weren't prepared, you had no clue, but everybody, that's exactly how you should be doing your presentation. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, holy cow, like, I got through this one. So what, <laughs> so what did I learn? A couple things about myself, like I said. Maybe I do have this hidden, hidden talent of this voice. So, again, now fast forwarding time, I actually went back to Edmonton. And what I did, um, I decided to look for a job. I got a job paying 32,000 bucks a year. My best friend, whose mom is an accountant, got me a job at a company called Northgate Industries. 
they create, in Edmonton, Alberta, there's a lot of oil work, okay? There's a lot of oil work, hence the Edmonton Oilers, if you guys are into hockey. Uh, but there's a lot of oil work. So what happened was, he's like, hey, my mom actually runs a whole accounting department. If you want to do something with marketing and whatnot, let me, let me ask her. And she's like, absolutely. She goes, you can file paperwork and do all this stuff and get started. I'm like, really? I graduated, it's in there, and do, so okay, no problem. I went in, and I was making 32,000 bucks a year. That wasn't enough for me because, again, I wanted to build my empire. I wanted to build what I wanted to build. So what happened? After making 32,000 bucks a year, I basically, the, the, my, my boss at the time said, don't worry, welcome to corporate well, Canada. Welcome to corporate Canada. And he goes, guess what? You get raises here. You get bonuses. You get all this stuff. I'm like, oh, that's super cool. When? He goes, after six months to a year, depending on your performance. And I'm thinking, wait a second, I'm looking at other people here at the, at the company. Nobody really has what I want. But I went through every single day like, maybe this is something that I personally have to do in order to work my way to the top. Because there was a guy who was actually in the sales department. For me at that time, he was driving a brand new Audi TT. And I'm like, I want that car. I want that car. I was like, that is going to be my car and I'm going to have it paid off. So what happened? I go to the boss after about six months, and he actually, no, actually, he called me in. He goes, Paul, I want to talk about your raise. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we sat down here. He goes, you've been doing awesome. Everybody loves how energetic you are, and you make the place fun and friendly. He goes, congratulations. You got the, the, the biggest raise anybody can get in your position. And I'm thinking, I'm like, holy cow, I'm jumping up to 60000 70000 And uh, he goes, I go, uh, he goes, you got a raise of, Fifteen hundred dollars, one thousand five hundred bucks. My heart dropped for a second, but then it got uplifted because I'm like, wait a second, I got a fifteen hundred dollar raise, but what I don't know is what. Say it again, loud. Don't be, don't be shy. How much higher? Nope. Not any different. Nope. Per, per what? Per year, per month, per day? I was hope. There was hope. Of course, not per day, but of course, I'm thinking per month, per... He goes, what do you mean per? Of course, per year. Yeah, my, my heart dropped back down right then, right after I found out. I'm like, per year? You've got to be kidding me. i got to find something else. So, my same friend... My same friend who got me the job over there, at that time, he was doing warehouse work and whatnot. He started a different job, a crazy job, an unheard of job that nobody would want to do except those who think different than the average Joe. And that job he was doing was door knocking, door-to-door -door sales. First of all, I graduated from business. I graduated with a marketing degree, and I'm going to go knock on doors, I told him, Steve. He goes, Paul, let me tell you something. What you make in one year, I make in six months. Back then, it was a lot different. We didn't get paid as much as we do now, and I'll talk a little bit about the pay. We were get, he was getting, at the time, Anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks every single sale. And we were selling, yep, we were selling electricity and natural gas. He was, at the time, selling electricity and natural gas door to door. And 25 to 50 bucks a day, uh, sorry, a, a sale. And he was making what I was doing still here, one year, he was actually doing it in six months. So he said, guess what, Paul? You have to get in your car in the freezing cold winter, drive all the way to your work every single day for this year, and I'm going to take home as much as you do in less the time. How does that make you feel? I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? But you have to knock on doors. He's like, that's right. And I'll tell you something about knocking on doors. What's your belief about knocking on doors? What do you think happens? I'm like, dude, you get rejected at every door. People tell you, get the off my property. Who's here? Who in here has heard of my podcast? Okay? You guys know my introduction? And by the way, go get a job. Right? That was a true story of what happened to me. 
And I'll talk about that in a bit once I get into the training. But uh, what happens is in six months, he was making what I did. He said, you know what? If you can get your mindset off of what you just told me and understand that if you were to come out and do this, I'm not, a, I'm not that social of an extrovert or even you know, an exciting guy with this stuff. You would probably do even better than me. So what did I do? I got so sick of being here that I forced, that I was by default forced into giving it a shot. But not necessarily just giving it a shot because I've developed my mind over time. When, when, I, was, when I was back then, my mindset was back then was not like it is today. And I always tell people, I'm like, if you're going to do this, don't, don't just give it a shot. Don't just try it out. You can't try it out because if you try it out, you're going to fail. You have to commit. But back then, I didn't know what I do know now. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on today is developing you guys. Okay? Developing your minds, your mindset from starting off. From where you, you're at right now to where you will become. So, I jumped in with it. And I started doing pretty good. I started doing pretty good. I was actually well on track after my first couple months to being the top salesperson. Because I would push my talent, another talent that I have, is I just don't quit. I am not a smart person at all, and I'm the first guy to say it. My dad, he's genius. I promise you, he's genius. He has inventions, literally, that can uh, uh, reduce the amount of, of energy that, that literally a whole city, like, and he's shown me diagrams, I'm like, holy shit. He's literally gone to, to, to the, the, the prime minister of Canada and actually shown him these things. He's like, anyways, let's not get into that. <laughs> but anyway, that's not me. I'm not. I'm not that person. So basically, I knew that this is something that I want to develop myself into and get better at it. I wanted to make more in a shorter period of time. So I, I ended up battling with the top sales guy being first, second, first, second. Why? Because I outworked the ones who, when it was minus 60 and it's snowing, who are complaining it's too cold, please let me in the van, please let me in the van. I'm like, dude, there's only amount, a certain amount of time I want to make as much as I can in literally the year. So what do I got to do? I just got to keep on knocking. So what I didn't know at that time is the more I knocked, the more doors I knocked on, the better I got at handling the situation. So the first thing I teach every person who's fairly new your goal ultimately is to close more sales selling door to door, right? But if you're not there, you're just not there yet, the more doors you knock on, the more experience you get. So if there's one thing you can control, which you can, it's the number of doors you knock on. Because like anything in life, the more you do it, the darn better you get. Okay? The problem is the majority of people don't open their mind on a day-to-day -day basis to saying, I'm going to knock that next door. They kind of go by like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get a deal today. And I wonder if, if you want to get a deal today, you will get it. If you put inside your heart that I am a lion that is super hungry and I am going to get my food, not I wonder if I'm going to eat today. You will do it. You'll find a way. And guess what? Take a look around really quick at each other. Has anybody in here gotten a deal before? Put your hand up. <laughs> so everybody's gotten a deal, which means you definitely know how to close a deal. So even if you, for some reason, your crazy mind, you basically told yourself, yeah, but I don't know if I, maybe I got lucky, right? How many people in here have actually said that to themselves? I actually got lucky and maybe it's no more doors out there. I did it. I do it. It's true. You, 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 it's amazing what your brain starts thinking of and coming up with to find the answer to how you're feeling. That's right. I can see how you guys are already programmed when you hear certain words. And that's the exact same that's the exact same motivation, the exact same mindset you have to have before we even get into pitches, before we even get into training on every single freaking door. Knock, knock, knock. Stand back. It's like, oh, this is my deal. This is 100% my deal. With 100% certainty, this is my deal. 
Okay, it starts off, folks, with belief. And I'm bad with spelling, so I know I'm going to probably misspell everything. How much belief do you have today that you guys and gals who are going to go out there are going to close a deal on a level from 1 to 10? Let me hear you. 10. Ten. Okay. The average person, typically in their mind, definitely starts off their day saying, I have a 10. I have a fixed belief that my belief of I'm going to get a deal out there is 100% I'm going to, I'm going to get a deal. I believe in myself that there's one deal, there's one customer in Las Vegas, there's one customer in Las Vegas that I can find to get a deal. How many people believe that they sold the last account, that's it? There's no more sales in Las Vegas. How many people believe that? Nobody believes that, right? So the BS inside your mind that's going to come out of, oh, wait a second. There's no deals in this neighborhood. This neighborhood's just been knocked on. I wonder where we're going to go today. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to find turf? I swear to God, no matter where you go, there are a ton of deals waiting. Waiting for you guys to pick it up. Whether they've been knocked on yesterday, they've been knocked on hours ago, and I've always proved it with my staff. I always, oh, you know what? I knocked this neighborhood. Can we move? BS. Let me knock right behind you on the exact same doors you knocked on, and I will get a deal. No word of a lie. Ike Money, he'll probably end up watching this, and I'll tag him on a video when I get the video. I want him to remember and actually comment on this video later on when we see it. We called him Ike Money. What happened was he, I would drop him off on turf, and he was the guy who always said, ah, this neighborhood, you know, he came up with an excuse. So a story was, I go, you know what? I'm going to prove to you that within three doors, within three doors, I'll guaranteed find somebody who you knocked on that I will sell. So first door we go, we knock on it. And he's behind me. Oh, yeah, somebody was just by here. I'm like, yeah, I know. That was Ike, right? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, just a quick question. Uh, you know, what, what in what he had to offer uh, because I'm taking notes. I'm actually the manager out here. What in what he had to offer didn't excite you? To just, just, just for, for, for notes. Um, we're just not interested. Light bulb went off in my head at that point. We're just not interested. Interested in, what do you mean you're just not? So, so and, and, and for me, my brain goes, like, things have to make sense to me. You can't just tell me you're not interested. Like, what do you mean you're just not interested? Not interested in what? Not interested in the fact that if, heaven forbid, your house got broken into, that the police would show up to your home? You're not interested in that? Right? So at the end of the day, when I actually am talking to him, he goes, well, I mean, we just don't have the money for it. I'm like, have how much money? How much money don't you have for it? I don't know. How much does it cost? Ike, this neighborhood sucks. I look back at him, I go, this neighborhood's, you didn't deliver the message to your people. That's the problem. Why am I, why, why do I get so excited about this and how come I have so much passion? Because I hope to God I wake up 100% of you. I hope to God I wake up 100% of you to realize that there are literally, you should be closing one in every three doors you knock on. Believe it or not. In front of a room of over a 30-day period, close to about 100, I think it was like 100 reps that I personally, with a couple of other teammates, recruited. 100 reps in a room, just like these rallies. I went and knocked with them every single day for 30 days. And what I did was, at the end of those 30 days, everybody sat down, and I came to the front of the room. Now, I want to start from the beginning all the way to the end, and uh, I'll say, for example, stand up, the first person. Brian, how, how many doors did it take me to get a sale? Sorry, yeah. Uh, one, how many do doors did it take from the whole room to actually get a deal? Three, how many doors did it take? Two, how many doors did it take? One, how many doors did it take? One, how many doors did it take? Three, how many doors did it take? Five, shit, how many doors did it take? Two, in front of the whole office, when we went around 100 people, they said one average was about one in three homeowners that I closed. You want me to tell you my stat when I started off and how I had tears in my eyes crying? I'll promise you, I don't cry often. But I cried, and I'll tell you a little bit. When I got started, I would knock one in every 50 homes, and I would get a deal. One in 50 homes. 
but I went from knocking one in 50 homes, getting down to one in three. So what changed? What happened? Mindset, number one, that's right. But also I acquired skills and talents and also started to believe. Started to believe that at the end of the day, just like with that story that I told you, it's not, they're not interested. It's not, I promise you. And I'll tell you guys, I would not have this passion to tell you guys and try to wake you up to this, to, to, to the fact that your customers, especially with what our systems, our products and services do, the largest security company in the world, so that if heaven forbid somebody broke in to somebody's property, that we get the police dispatch, loud siren going off, the first person you need to sell, there's, there's the first person you need to sell, who do you think it is about the products and services? Sorry, I can't hear you. Yourself. Sorry, once again, I can't hear you. Yourself. That's right. You need to sell yourself in on the products and services about how badass what we do really is. And when you can get passionate about what it is you do and why, bringing that to the customer, you will develop yourself. Now, people always say, do you think you could do awesome in magazine sales? Do you think you could do awesome in solar sales? Do you think you can do awesome in different types of sales? Some of them I, can, I could say, maybe solar, maybe pest. But magazines, I'd bomb it because it's not something that I personally like. Really, it's not something that I personally like. I couldn't wake up every day myself to go do that. Why have I stuck in with home automation and home security? Because I, with 100% certainty, would never live one freaking day without it. I would not. My family, I would not live one day without it. So jumping back into, if you believe with 100% belief that you are going to get a deal, what happens? How certain? If you're 100% in your belief that, that you're going to get a deal, what do you think from a level of 1 to 10 happens of your certainty that you're going to get a deal? Where is it? It's out of 10. Now, if you're certain and you believe that there's 100% an account out there and you're certain about it, what do you think happens to the amount of your potential, your true potential, meaning how much you give at the doors? What do you think happens to how much energy you give, how much excitement you give? Say it again. One, one or ten? ten? Sorry, one or ten? ten. Sorry, one or ten? ten. I'm going to beat you guys up. So the potential... How much you actually put into it is at a 10. Now guess what? Anybody who's half-assed something, do you think they got a better result than somebody who's, and long-term, not just a small thing, but long-term, somebody who's half-assed something, do you think they got a better result than somebody who's give, given it their all, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Do you believe and agree with me that you would have a better result? You would have a better result if you gave more of your potential? Yes or no? Okay. Yeah. So you, we all focus on the result. We want a deal. We all focus on, we want a result, which is an actual sale. But at the end of the day, we need to start thinking where it stems from. Do we believe that there's an account out there? And if we believe in it, I'm 100% certain that I'll be able to collect that. Now, if I'm 100% certain that I'm going to collect that, how much of my energy am I going to use? 1 to 10, let me hear you. Ten. Stand up really quick. Ten. How, how certain? How certain are we that we can go out there and we can get an account today? Ten. I heard 11. I like that. Have a seat. Thank you. So we got to get the blood going. So guess what? What do, you, what do you think falls into your lap? The result of you get your account. I'm going to talk about that. She says, get two. Now, here's a big problem. Sorry to bring the energy all the way down. We start off with a 10. Knock, 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 Mr. Homeowner. How's it going? Hey, how's it going, dude? I'm just not interested because we haven't gotten the skill set and all the stuff that we talked about didn't really settle in because you got to hear it over and over again to really settle in. In order to master this, you got to do it over and over and over again. You got to repeat it. You have to repeat it. Because our brains, we get reprogrammed inside of our minds when we do something over and over and over again. 
So what happens is my belief is 100%, but I knock on one door. I knock on two doors. I go 10 minutes. I go an hour. I go two hours without a freaking deal, right? I go two hours without a deal. Now what happens to my belief? Oh, we heard it. I heard it. It, goes, it doesn't go to zero for everybody, but we have this stamina, and this is what's called stamina. We go from 10 to, oh shit, am I going to get a deal? But you know what? That's, that's, that's mindless. Of course I'm going to. So now we go into an eight. Now think about this. Wait a second, because this is danger zone. This is the reason why some of you don't get a deal every single day. Please, I'm going to say it. But the problem is if you don't literally live it, if you guys don't literally understand and it's not, you guys aren't awakened to it, it will not become a reality and you'll keep suffering. I don't want anybody to not come back with a deal tomorrow. I'm going to hold everybody accountable to getting a deal tomorrow. Today, obviously, to come back in for tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> at least one deal. So I'm going to give it my all. Now, if we believe at an eight, our belief system went down. So the certainty, we talked about it. So wait a second. So I'm talking anywhere between seven and eight. So I wonder if I'm going to, you know what? This is the neighborhood. It's because they knocked on it. So I wonder, maybe I'll find it somewhere else. Doubt kicks in. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm not interested. Well, of course he's not because this is the neighborhood that did. Yeah, well, I, all the BS excuses. And believe it or not, even when I train and teach, I'm like, I don't want too much of that negativity to come in my mind. But it basically goes down. Now, if you half-ass shit, sorry for my language. If you half-ass shit, it does matter. It does. Your possibility, and I'm talking to get a deal a day, folks, minimum. Minimum, minimum, it goes down. And when your possibility of going, if you're, when, you, when it actually goes down, because you now aren't using the majority of your potential, and I'll relate it, your possibility of not getting a deal is actually re a reality. And I'll tell you something. Anybody who plays any sports, for me, it's ice hockey, okay? So when I step on the ice, how certain am I in my head that I'm going to score a goal how certain am I that I'm going to stop my opponent from actually uh, scoring a goal? And then also on the opposite side, I actually want to pass perhaps the puck to my teammate who can possibly score a goal. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking those three things. How certain am I? I'm 100% certain that I'm putting that puck in that net. Now if I were to go out there like, I wonder if I'm going to score today. I wonder if I can keep up with this team. Or I'm 100% certain, but then I'm like, holy shit, this other team is like quick. Now, here's the last part of this puzzle. Here's the last part, and please listen up. When you don't get the results you want, when you do not get the results that you want, what do you think happens back to how much you believe in one yourself, how much you believe in this job is real? Hoorah, high five, great, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, how much do you believe more the next day over time? How much more do you believe that you can get an account, you can get a sale? More or less, would you say? Less, right? If you don't have any sales coming in, it's a danger zone. Because then you start going, oh shit, maybe there's something wrong with me, my pitch. And then your potential goes down. And as a result, you go on slumps. One day, two days, three days. And ladies and gentlemen, the longest I went, and this was, believe it or not, even in my, my, my times where I was consistent with a sale a day, the longest I went, and I still recall, believe me, the each emotion that I went through, three days without a sale. I literally, like, like was, was, you gotta be effing kidding me. So I studied what I was doing wrong. I was studying what I was doing wrong. And what I found out was, of course, this, but also I was battling with customers trying so hard to get a sale that I was battling with them outside of their home to try and get a deal. When the reality is in order to get a sale, we have to get in the house. Why do we have to get in the house? Right? We want to do the presentation so we can build the value up of what we have to offer. Why? Going back to why that homeowner, which when, by the way, I actually knocked on the door with Ike there, 
I started talking about that, what he's paying and what da 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 da. And then eventually he's like, oh, security? I'm like, you, you kidding me? He didn't even know it was security. I'm like, you know what, sir, let me show you something really quick. And I did my approach as I'm going to go over inside the house, signing up paperwork. We came to a problem right at the end when I go to Mr. Homeowner, slide the paperwork over. I need your signature on that paper. I need your authorization is how I said it. He goes to me, he goes, I'm not signing that. I go, why wouldn't you sign that? You know what he told me? We have to have a shot at tequila. <laughs> he actually goes, we have to have a shot at tequila before we actually do this. I'm like, sir, I don't drink on the job, and I really never in my life have. I don't drink on the job, and if it really means I'm going to lose this over a shot of tequila, and he brought one over with the worm in it at the bottom, I'm like, even worse. I'm like, hell no, I would not touch that crap. I didn't say it that way, but I'm like, I'm not going to, no. And even if, I wouldn't have, because I just don't. I have my, my moral saying never to do it, and I've had sales reps who did, and literally had to get rid of them because of it, beg for their job back. Because you don't do that on the job. I don't care. I have certain morals. If it means I don't get this deal, there's something that I stick for. And I'll tell you, I don't break those rules because me, I'm very disciplined. It's hard at times, but I'll tell you, you have to learn to stay disciplined. I go, sorry, sir, if it really means that. And obviously, we were joking around. I go, but please, come on. We've worked so hard. We're doing this and this is. He's like, all right, no problem. I'm joking with you. And he signed it. Not joking, but he's like, all right, it's bothering me. But, you know, and then I, he actually gave us a bottle, I think. He goes, and have it at home. I was like, dude, this is the nicest thing. And I don't, so my, my buddy took it, Ike, and uh, we went. So, I mean, it's crazy that, believe me, half of it is in your mindset. So, now, I'm going to get into how can I get you guys to getting down to your one in three, one in five, maximum, let's just say one in ten, within literally these next 30 days, one in 10, okay? I want to teach you guys the actual stuff that I learned on how to close sales. It's, it, it may feel, and I know it's, it does, it feels like magic or it feels like you got you to gotta not necessarily trick the customer into getting one of these things, but it feels like we got to like work them in some specific way to get these accounts. Now, when I studied the top salespeople, because when I started off doing alarm sales, I wasn't the best in my office. After three months, I wanted to quit. Here's my tear story. I was doing okay, I was doing pretty decent, but I wasn't the top person. The top person in my office had no sales experience and was a surfer out of California. I'm like, this guy's destroying and beating me? I was obsessed, as I'm always obsessed, with anything I do and I wanna learn, being number one. And I wasn't that person. I was not that person. So I finally went to a park and I called my manager and I said, you know what? I did this, believe it or not. And it's not even in my nature and still when I think about it, but I'm going to share the embarrassing story that I lived. I'm done. I've beaten myself up day after day. I'm like, I quit. I can't do this anymore. I was crying. My manager's like, are you crazy? You're like the third or fourth best guy in the office. And by the way, we were producing thousands of accounts and we were doing a, a, just a summer program. We were doing awesome. I'm like, he's like, why would you, why, the last person I would think of. He goes, this is a joke or, I go, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not number one. And I've tried and I pushed and I, I, I did everything I possibly can. And again, my mindset today is different than it was back then. But I did everything I possibly can to close a deal. I tried everything I possibly could to close a deal. And I, I closed deals to be that. He said, you know what? Are you sure? I go, yeah. He goes, so then what are these people doing that you're not? I'm like, what do you mean these people? The top people, a one, two, and three, third spot. What are they doing that you're not? I'm like, the hell if I know. Well, how do I know what they're doing? He goes, if you want to be just like them, you probably should ask to shadow them or see what they're doing so that you can mirror it and do it to you, to how you are. I'm like, light bulb went off. Like, it's crazy. At times, we, we talk ourselves into this, this crazy storm. Our brain's like, wait a second. You know, you're, you can't become successful at this because, well, this, this, and that, and this, and your, your mind pulls amazing rabbits out of these hats to come up with finding a reason why you feel the way you do. Right? So, what happened at the end of the day is I shadowed these people, and I found out that they were actually doing Less work than I was at the doors. And at the end of the day, they were getting a better result. 
So what were they doing? They were really calm. They were asking more questions to the customers. They were standing further back. They were doing certain things, little things, that I wasn't doing, but those little things made all the difference. I found out that in order to master the art of door-to-door -door sales, okay, you don't have to be this rocket scientist. You don't have to be genius. You just have to believe in yourself, but you also have to understand there's a process to it. Okay, there's a simple process. What phase in this process am I at? I got it. Number one, get in the house. Number two, ask questions. Number three, do an awesome presentation. Number four, close the sale. And number five, reassure them that they did the right decision. And throughout that process, it all has to make sense to the customer as to why they should do business with you, your company, and right now. Okay? So I'm going to show you guys that simple process. But before I do that, let's all stand up really quick. And then let's all sit down. But let's all stand back up and sit back down. I'm going to get the energy going. Let's sit back down. I'm going to work you guys to the bone. Now, we want to hit, what's our number? 100. We want to hit, what's our number? 100. We want to hit, what's our number? Okay. We are hitting 100. There's no way that I'm going to come all the way from Canada down to here and we're not going to hit 100 accounts. We are hitting 100 accounts. Look around at how many people there are in the room. And I did the numbers close to 50, including the people in the back. So what does that mean? Each one of us has to be accountable to making a minimum of 1000 bucks. What does that mean? How many accounts? Minimum of two accounts. We hit that 100. Now, who in here believes they cannot, because we're talking about belief, who in here believes they cannot hit two accounts? Beautiful. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. So now that we believe it, we have to be certain about it. And we got to hold ourselves accountable. I need to make sure that I deliver to you guys the energy and the excitement Okay, to be able to go out there so that when you knock on that door, Mr. Homeowner is not at the door, that the energy, because this is the first step, that the energy and the amount of potential you use at that door, no matter what happens at this door, doubles up at the next door. I'm going to teach you something right now. I'm going to teach you something right now that will guarantee you actually get an account in under 10 doors. Remember we talked about the actual belief starts off at a 10. But when we get rejected, it goes from a 10 down to an 8. I'm going to show you a system right now that you guys can do instead of going from a 10 down to an 8, how you can go to a 10 all the way up to a 20. You double up your energy at that next door, regardless of the outcome of this door. Instead of taking yourself down, you double your energy. What does that do? It squeezes yourself to get an account at that next door. Think about it. If I were to knock on this door and he rejected me and something didn't happen, and instead of going down, I go up and I go, okay, he rejected me, that means the next homeowner I'm going to talk to and use more of my energy. Now I use more. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Homeowner? By the way, what's your name? Demonte. Really quick, follow me. Boom. Now I have that much more energy. I got rejected. I got far. You know what? Screw this. You run to that next door. You run. You run. You run. You cut through grass if you have to. In Canada, you don't do that. But when I, you really don't, they'll murder you for walking on their grass. So when I had to do that to start in Denver, I was like, holy, wait a second here. I'm going to, oh, let me do this. Let me do it. And homeowners are cutting their lawn. I'm like, I got to get that deal. I got to get that deal. And then homeowners are like, hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm like, holy, you didn't like, kill me for walking on. All right, learn that, I guess. It's not as bad. Some people, of course, do mind walking around. You double up your energy. See, I can say it. But the reality is, the people who have a minimum of two accounts by the end of the rally are the ones who it's stuck in with and actually implemented what I'm talking about. Even today, going out there and getting a minimum of two accounts. Really, going out there and getting a minimum of two accounts just today. Each one of you can do it. It's not about what you say. Why? Because 90% of the account, of whether or not you're going to get the account, is not what you say, it's how you present yourself. But yet we all focus on, Paul, can you give me your pitch? Can you give me your pitch about what you say to get people to say yes? Remember I told you I'm not scripted, nor do I have one? I'm not a scripted person. 
Why? We are all individuals. We are all different. What I need to do with you to get an account or you or you is going to be different. The one thing I can control is how much belief I have in what I sell. And if you haven't sold yourself in, listen to my presentation about why I believe home security, residential and commercial security or security with home automation is absolutely something that 100% every person deserves and should have. And when you sell yourself in on that and you use that energy to say, I totally understand. Who in here has gotten not interested? Please raise your hand. Okay, we're gonna break out. Everybody's gotten not interested. Really? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Every single person gets not interested. And there's a reason why we get that not interested. Oh, before I get into that, who in here has gotten it? Who in here got a deal uh, yesterday? Okay, so I'm going to do this, and again, this is not going to be something that anybody should take uh, in a bad way, but again, as your coach, I was brought here to make sure you guys hit 100. So everybody who got a deal, I need you to stand up, please, who got a deal already. First of all, let's give them a round of applause. Now, now what I need is the people who got a deal to come sit up front, and the people who didn't, please to sit behind them. This is very important, please, okay? Because by the end, by the end of the, the rally, everybody's gonna keep moving up, moving forward, okay? Guys, lady, let's, let's, let's still focus. Guys, guys, focus, guys, 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 please. I'm gonna carry this energy over, okay? I'm giving you my all. I love each and every one of you. And guess what, my, even further than just getting 100, because in my head, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna crush 100. We're not going for 100, we're going for 200. Because if we go for 200, you think we're going to hit 100? Yes or no? Yes. Do you think we're going to hit 100? Yes. There we go. So guess what? We're going to hit that number, that's for sure. Now, every single person is going to eventually move up when they get an account. What I need you guys today to do is this. You're going to go out there, you're going to get your deals. When you get your deal, I then want you to go and help and work with somebody else to help get them in a house so that we can double up. So say you knock and you're not, you didn't get a deal yet. You knock and you get a deal. Perfect. Right after your deal, I need you to go and help somebody who has not gotten a deal to get inside and close a deal. Now that you both got deals, you helped him close one, you guys are both going and helping other people who did it. What do you think happens? The ripple effect happens. You got it. We're there to help each other, to pick each other up, to hold each other, right? Your last rally, I watched that video where you guys are holding each other up. That was touching. Okay, so we get not interested for two main reasons. Number one, they have no clue of what it means to have one of these products and services inside their house. They have no clue. That's why they're telling you they're not interested. Okay, the second thing is on top of they don't know the exact details. They don't know why, or they don't know what it is that they're going to get and, and what it would mean to have one of these things in their house. They know there's a price tag attached to it. Why the heck would you buy something that you don't even know? Everybody knows home security is like, hey, isn't it that like beepy thing that's like on the wall with those number stuff and something like sirens and things? Well, yeah, I'm, of course I'm gonna sign a three year contract, you know, lock myself into some random stranger who showed up at my door who's saying, no, trust me, trust me. <laughs> so do you, I need you guys to understand why you get not interested. So when I was knocking and I wasn't doing the best to start, every person I needed to study the brain. I need to study why. If there's an issue where you didn't get a deal or you're not getting consistently minimum of one account a day, there's an issue there. There's an issue with the process. There's an issue with what's going on. You can, and everybody who actually does understand the process goes out there and does very well. The most I sold in a day is 10. Yeah, 10 deals in a day. My last insult, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, the, reason, the reason I did that, long story short, was in Denver, we had a competition. This competition wasn't money, this competition wasn't anything. So we were going to the Colorado Rockies game, okay? And what would happen was they paired us up, me versus you, you versus him, for example. And what, everybody's going, manager comes, congratulations everybody. We're all going to the Rockies game today. It was Memorial Day, by the way. We're all going to the Rockies game, so congratulations. 
Everyone's like, yeah, hoorah. Oh, we have a competition on top of that as an incentive. Okay, what's the incentive? I'm going to pair you guys up. And whoever loses from the pair has to cross-dress the other person and come to the Colorado Rockies game. Hell no. I'm putting makeup in a dress and freaking lowering myself to go directly to the Colorado Rockies. No way. I wrote 10 deals that day. My last deal, my last, we were going the following day, sorry. But my last deal was at 1130 getting installed, same day. 1130. Lady goes, I swear. The lady goes, really? I'm like, number one in customer service, ma'am. In my head, I'm like, I ain't putting lipstick. Uh, so, and really, and the other guy was, was telling me he's at eight. He's at, you know, I'm almost, I'm struggling. I'm like, dude, I'm going to get two more just to be on, on safe side. Lo and behold, he had three. I had no idea. He had three. So, uh, anyways, I didn't, I didn't cross-dress, yada, yada, but I actually did, obviously, um, get my accounts. And what I learned about that is I am in control. As you acquire the talents and the skills, I am in control of how, you know when, when, when Chris was talking about you are in control of how much you want to make? Well, that happens when you understand that it's not magic. You just need to learn the process. And once you learn the process and the reason why you're getting not interested, we come up with the answer. Okay? So my goal is Mr. Prospect, who's on the other side of the door, I first of all understand why he, want, he doesn't want to do business with me. Because of the reasons I explained. So we got to build that up. But I can't just build it up unfortunately, unless I actually get them interested. So, the first thing is our opener pitch. And I'm going to go through the timeline. So, the first thing is our opener pitch. Okay? In our opener, when you wake up before even, there's a pre-opener, okay? I'm going to get into this is the part of the pitch. There's a pre-opener. From when you woke up in the morning, if you felt great, you felt like crap, okay? There's days, it's the reality. Every single day, we're going to feel good, we're going to feel bad. It doesn't, that's, that's just known. It's the, the, the peaks and valleys of, of life and, and how it works out. Whether you have a million bucks, two million bucks, ten million bucks, there's always going to be problems and shit in our lives. Excuse my, my English, <laughs> really. But there's going to be stuff that happens in our lives. I get that. But we are, believe it or not, in control of that. And that's what we need to understand. See, a lot of us on a conscious level don't understand that we are really in control of the way we feel. I get it we may not have gotten sleep. I get it there may have been problems in our lives or our spouses or our kids or stuff that we're going through. But believe it or not, think about this deep within your subconscious mind. Deep. At the end of the day, the issues you're going through do you have the mental capacity, no matter how bad it is, do you have the mental capacity to switch it off for a short period of time? If you wanted to, do you have that? Can I say no matter how bad it is, and I'm not saying it's easy, okay? I'm not one of those, I'm a realist here. I'm not saying it's easy, but do you have the mental capacity to say, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to make today the best damn day and I'll deal with the shit when I get home. Okay, because that's the start. That really is the start to your success today in going out and writing those accounts is having that mindset because what does it do? It puts you in, start C. It puts you in what of your life? You got it. It puts you in control. How many of us like being in control of ourselves, our lives, and what's happening in our life? Okay, we all do. People get depressed and don't feel great because we start to feel like we're not in control of our emotions, our feelings. We are powerful. Each and every one of us are powerful individuals. But the problem is we don't all understand that we ultimately control. And our surrounding and what we've seen from growing up as a child all the way to where we're at today, we are who we are today because of what our eyes witnessed and interpreted, interpreted, really, what we witnesses, witnessed and interpreted, what happened? Somebody slapped you across the face, how did you take a look at that? Shit, I deserved it because I stole something from the grocery store. Or, you know, shit, I, I didn't deserve that. This guy thought I was somebody else. Anything could happen, but what you interpret, what's going on in your life, determines who you are today. Okay? You are in control. 
My goal is to get you to understand, your, yes, you're even in control of whether or not you're going to get a sale today. Now, it's hard for a lot of people, and I know, it's awesome, pump, motivation session. It's easy for me to sit here and say, trust me, you're in control. And it's easy for you to say, wow, he's right. But what ain't easy? For you to believe it with 100% certainty that yes, I am in control, and yes, I'm going to do what it takes. Because think about it. Remember I just told you, we witnessed how many days that you've gone without sales? So what's real to you is there's a possible chance I cannot get a sale. So I gotta take you from, from, from what you've seen and mentally reprogram you in probably about 30 minutes to actually say, you know what, yes you can. Okay? So once you're in control and you know that and now you're at that 10, my second thing like we talked about is I gotta get that inside you guys to carry it throughout the day. No matter what emotion comes back to lie to you and say, you know what, maybe today's not. Maybe he was just pumping me up and exciting me or whatever these thoughts that go through people's minds, that this is a reality. If you hold that 10 at every single door and double it up when you get rejected, your account's right around the corner. Remember, the first person you need to sell is yourself. So I'm selling myself in on this is the door. Get off my property. This is 100% the door. I'm not interested. You know, I really don't want it, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. That's awesome. This is the actual door. This is the actual door. Every door, when you, actually, when you start to believe that, I don't even have to teach you what to say. Because remember, it's really just 90% of it is how you present yourself. So my focus is getting you to believe it can happen. You know why? Because if you're thrown out to the wolves, and there are wolves out there, and it's survival mode, guess what we all have by default? We all can survive and find a way to survive. Okay? You will survive and get your accounts. So long as you believe, it's literally, if I don't come home today with an account, you better beat yourself up to the point where you feel like shit. You know, I get people who come back to my office sometimes and they're like, yeah, I didn't get a deal today. Anyways, who cares? Ha <laughs> ha, lollygagging, laughing. There's a problem there. You do have to, believe it or not, beat yourself up. You do have to. You gotta feel like absolute shit when you come home and you don't get an account. If you don't feel that way, you got to start selling yourself in on it is not okay to go out there and work for free, okay? It's not okay because people want what we have. People want what we have, but the problem is, are you willing to go out there and show them? Are you willing to go out there and show them that what you have to offer is definitely something that they, with 100% certainty, cannot live without? And what does it take? The process I'm going to go over right now. So, your pre-opener, hyping yourself up, getting yourself excited to go out there and make it happen, right? We're going to get ourselves excited to go out there and make it happen. So now, we already talked about that. I knock on this guy's door. The first thing this Mr. Homeowner is going to think of when I knock on that door is, is this person A? Or is this person A? Oh, wow, he's got it. Is he selling me religion? Is he sa is a salesperson? But guess what? There's a couple more things there that we tend to forget that people believe that maybe this is. Is it my friend? Is it my family member? Is it somebody who's perhaps a neighbor? Is it somebody that is of importance that I need to open the door to because possibly they're from the city or God knows? Right? There's that, when we knock on the door, there's that question mark. And that question mark, right, is... Starts with a C, curiosity. The number one thing we want to create in our opener pitch is curiosity. What do we got? Our job sucks when we knock on doors. We got what we want before we even, they even came to talk to us. We got what we want. We got curiosity. The problem is we sell them out of that curiosity when we say, hi, my name is Paul Curry, and I'm with America's Security and I'm in the neighborhood doing A, B, C, D. You had them that curiosity before you even knocked on it. Who the heck is this person at my door? But we lost that curiosity with what we did. You are in control. So in order to keep and maintain that curiosity, because we already have it, okay? We need to not sound like the typical salesperson or the religious person who's selling them religion at the door, because we're not. We're not. We're not the typical salespeople. You are not. 
Remember, it starts with belief. Sell yourself in because it's true. And I don't mean in a, in a rude way. I personally love sales. You got to sell yourself in on you're not the typical salesperson because I'm not. I'm not the average typical who just knocked on their door. I'm not. Believe in that. I don't care if they've been knocked on. Oh, yeah, you know, somebody was just by. Oh, that's awesome. What were they talking about? Security. Oh, which, which model of the, the panels were they? And what company were they? I don't know. They don't. Perfect. Okay? They don't know. They don't. Remember, 90%, 95, or even 99, I could say, of the people who actually go out there and knock are people who didn't do what the top people are actually doing. So what does that, what does that mean? Got it. There is so much opportunity in every neighborhood behind every door to get your account. So, we got to sound different than the average person. And uh, this is where I'm actually going to get into a pitch. But beforehand, I want one courageous individual to stand up really quick. Beautiful. Come on to the front. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Two high fives. There you go. Okay. I was that person who was the first person to stand up all the time. You guys, I noticed when I said I need one courageous individual to stand up, the first thing that went through your minds is, oh shit, is he going to put me on the spot? Is he going to make me pitch? Honestly, who thought that? Put your hand up. Okay, almost everybody. C, the person who gets, the person who gets what the others don't have is the one who's willing to do what the others won't. Okay? Very important, please, please, if I can deliver this message to you that it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel extremely uncomfortable to get out of that mindset of, oh shit, what if? It's going to be very difficult. But at the end of the day, how difficult really is it? And how much control do you have over that switch? See, I see it as a switch inside of mine. It's a switch. It's either on or it's off. There's a switch in her mind that said, even though, let me jump up, let me get out there, let me make it happen. And I'll tell you, it's not just now. There's probably a lot of things. There's probably a lot of different difficulties she may have had in her life that she put herself in that uncomfortable situation so that she can get comfortable with it and then move forward so that it becomes more real to her. And I need you guys, each and every one of you guys, to have that exact same mindset. Because when you do, I swear, you guys, each and every individual in here, can create the next Apple, can create the next Microsoft, can dominate at this and do what it is as well with the money that you make and with your goals and your obsessions, which were all amazing that you mentioned today, okay? Very important. You are in control. Don't forget that for one minute, one second. So I need another volunteer just by a show of hands. Okay, I am not going to get up here and continue to talk. I need another volunteer. Who's going to be the first volunteer? Okay, let's sit down really quick. And now the first volunteer, I'm going to need to stand up. Who's going to be my next volunteer? Stand up. Okay, let's have a seat. Okay, if you're going to be a volunteer, I'm going to need you to stand up. Who's going to be the first volunteer? We're getting better. Last time, sit down. I need a volunteer who can stand up. Beautiful. Folks, it's a mindset. I love each and every one of you equally, I promise you. Okay? Um, if, if I, okay, MMA fighting. Do you think the coach goes, oh, hey, sweetheart, you know, come on, just let's, oh, one second. Oh, one second. Does that coach beat them to the pulp? He knows he probably does it. Okay? I'm going to do that with each and individual, each, and indiv each one of you guys, because from the bottom of my heart, I love each and every one of you. You know why? The num number one reason? Because you guys are willing to do, and gals, of course, are willing to do what others aren't and follow in the footsteps of somebody who is just like me in your shoes fighting to make it. I will not let one of you guys quit. I will not let one of you guys not come back without a minimum of two accounts before the end of the rally. Remember, we're hitting 200. And even if we don't do that, because our mindset was at 200, over 100 is 100% going to happen. Our mindset, think big. Dream big. See big. I want to see each and every one of you guys create the next Apple. Create the next Uber. Belief. Okay? So, what I typically do is I give my pitch. Now you have the opportunity to pass and give it to somebody else. Or do you want to give your pitch first? Oh, I'm pitching. Yeah, absolutely you're pitching. There's a reason why. Actually, I'm sitting so fast. 
Oh, oh, let's not. Okay, let's not. Let's, let's focus here. And I'm going to beat you up. She's my girl. Now, let's not focus on nervous. Every one of us are in the exact same shoes. Let's not be nervous. I want you to inside your mind, okay, whoever is out there that you know who's been very successful at this or who you want to become and be, you are that person right now. And once you understand that inside your mind, I am that person, I can stand up and I can do this, yeah. remember, the best part is, don't worry about what you're going to say. It's not about what you're going to say. It's about that energy, that excitement inside you of, oh shit, can I do this? Who gives a shit about if I can or not? Because I know I can. Mindset. When you do, you're thrown to the wolves. You're going to find a way to pick up a rock and throw it at those wolves so that they don't come and get you. Okay? So the number one thing I need from you guys is to believe. Remember, a tree is as good as the fruit it bears. Right? If the fruit is poisonous, the roots are poisonous. So my, I know everybody says they want to hear my pitch, but the problem is if I can't get you guys to really understand that, yes, with 100% certainty, I am super confident to do my pitch, which again, 90% of it is how you feel, 10% of it is what you actually say, okay? then you're not going to be able to generate accounts. So this is the number one thing, and keep in mind, I have an hour to do this, right? So I want to make sure that each one of you with 100% certainty go out there and for the reason of why you're doing this job, okay? So don't worry about it. Give your pitch how it comes because it doesn't matter what you say. It's about how much control you take of yourself, how much control you take of the sale, but then how much control as well you put in my hands when you want. Because you have the opportunity to sell me. You decide whether or not I get what you want. And not in a rude way, but in a way where they actually say, you know what? Okay, cool. This thing's awesome. I actually want one of these things. You are in control of who you do business with, right? Do you have the option if somebody says, yeah, I want that? Do you have the option to say, you know what? Honestly, uh, it's probably better that you don't go with me. Um, you probably find somebody else. Do you have the option if you wanted to? Right? You do. You have that option. So understand that you are in control. Control is huge, and I don't mean uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a bad way. Control is very important to understand that, yes, I am able. If this guy's rude to me, you are in control of saying, you know what, I don't want to talk to this person anymore. Let me just move on. The best, get off my property, da 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 da, da. Awesome, well, great. Have a wonderful day, man. Like, what's wrong with you? You have that opportunity to do that, okay? So you're not cornered. All right, let's come to the middle. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, do you, where's your sales slick? Let's make it as real as possible. We'll get into the opener. And uh, d does somebody want to give her a sales slick? Yeah. So in our opener pitch, we want to create that curiosity. We want to keep it going. We don't want to sound like the typical salesperson. I don't expect you to literally be the best to start. I don't care what I want you to do, believe it or not, is fall on your face so that you can keep on falling, so that you can keep on getting up. So eventually you say, I'm going to figure out what works. And when I do, I'm going to eventually be even that much more better, OK? So uh, opener. So knock, knock, knock. Let's just say you knock on the door. Create curiosity. Get me interested in what you have to, to offer, OK? So I'm going to wait till you knock on my door. I'm playing PlayStation, by the way. My doorbell just rang. She knocked on the door. Oh, I'm about to score. OK, whatever. Let me, let me push pause. Who is that? I wonder who that is, OK? There are so many different things that could possibly be happening inside that house, okay, that you need to understand <clears throat> that's possibly happening, that when you come out, they po I want to get back to my hockey game. I want to get, I'm playing PlayStation, okay? I want to get back to that. So because I want to get back to that, and I have no idea who this is, oh, I wonder if that's, is that my brother, my mom? Oh, okay, looks like a salesperson, or maybe. Hey, how's it going? Really good, thank you so much for asking. Rosa Leah. I'm just in the neighborhood talking to some of your neighbors yeah. uh, about emergency services that we have. Oh, uh, sorry, I missed my voice a little bit. Oh, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Uh, but yeah, uh, I noticed that you were playing a video game in there. Yeah, absolutely. Playing oh, NHL, yeah. Cool. Can I play with you? <laughs> probably in a little bit, but uh, my wife probably wouldn't like that, the fact that she comes home and another lady's in my house. Oh, okay, okay, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But yeah, what is it you're selling? Uh, I'm not selling anything. Okay. Uh, they actually, they, they, we have sales people, they make a lot more money than we do. Uh, <laughs> no all worries. I do is advertising, strictly advertising. Yeah. Uh, but all I ask is if you could do me a favor, yeah. uh, basically, if you come out here real fast. Yeah, yeah, sure. Awesome, awesome. Um, if you could place one of my signs, mm. or ADT signs, you've seen us before, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. A lot of your neighbors have us. Yeah. We're just trying to get more visible, more protection. That's all I have to say. Uh, basically, if you could place it somewhere right here, uh, is it okay if I place two? 
Um, awesome. awesome. Uh, place okay. one right yeah. here. Sure. Another one over there. Just because uh, cars come this way and cars come that way. Yeah. Uh, gives us huge visibility. Literally 90% of our business comes from that sign alone. Uh, all I ask is if you can uh, basically clean it up in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, water it, watch it grow, basically. No, I'm just messing oh, with you. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm going to be honest, I'm not that good at that. But uh, okay, mm, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, that's all I ask you to do. Is that all right? Awesome, awesome. By that being said, I'm actually going to, I'm not asking you to do it at no cost whatsoever. Uh, you have a beautiful home. Kay. That's what really triggered me to come over here. Uh, basically, I'll ask is if uh, we can... Sorry again. If we can compensate you, we're going to compensate you with a security system today. So we're not asking you to advertise for us at no cost. Sure. Uh, all we ask is, you, have you ever thought of actually, uh, when you first moved in, do you guys ever talk about having a Yeah, we have, but just we, we don't have the money for it right now. Uh, um, yeah, 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 here, it's, it's tight during the Christmas holidays what's a, and all whatnot. But um, all I ask is if you can actually keep a just small amount of uh, monitoring uh, that I ask you to just to keep it on. Uh, that way you can actually back up that system, that sign alone. Uh, but yeah, we compensate you with this. Okay. Uh, but if have you you said you guys have never thought of it? It's a money situation. Um. Yeah. It's just we need to we need to think about it. And uh, okay, let's stop right there. Give a round of applause. <laughs> wow. Okay. Remember, as your coach, I'm going to beat you up, but I'm also going to give you the, the, the things you did awesome. So the first thing that I found out that she did a wonderful job with, very personable. I trusted her off the bat, okay? Now, what I would like to see a little bit more of from you, actually a lot more of from you, is question-based selling. I need you to ask me questions, more questions. Um, you were the only one doing the talking. I need you to talk, stop, ask a question. Talk, stop, ask a question, okay? So that's the only thing you need to correct because once they start, you start getting the customer involved, when you're speaking, 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 what's going on here in my mind is, I wonder if she's telling him, oh my God, that game NHL, and I'm, I'm not hearing what you have to say. So is that something you want to do? I didn't hear everything. Remember, at the end, we want it all to make sense, right? We want it all to make sense because if it doesn't make sense, they will not, they will not definitely know. So give her another round of applause. You did freaking awesome. 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 So who wants to be my next? Oh, there we go. But wait, sit down. Who wants to be my next guest? Back down, sit back down. Now that's, that, that's not impressive enough for me. So who wants to be my next guest? There we go. There we go. Get Get comfortably uncomfortable. You got to get into that situation, okay? Opportunities don't last forever unless you actually jump into it, right? You got to jump into it. You know it's what you want. You guys, we have the goal of accomplishing a minimum of how many accounts? 100. 200. We're going to hit 100 for sure by aiming for 200. But each and every one of you, what's your goal minimum of? What's your minimum? Two. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to do what? What's the first thing we need to do? Control. Take control. And then we also have to do what? It starts with a B. What was the first one? Relate. You guys listen, and I love that. Okay? It's already happened. It's going to happen. Now, uh, I, for the last time, if you guys don't mind, do you want to hear my pitch really quick? Or Yeah? Okay, awesome. So who's going to be my guest speaker? Actually, you are. Yeah, that's right. You are mine. Uh, and then I need a sign, and then uh, if you guys don't mind, uh, a sign. Yeah, ADT sign, and then uh, a slick. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so we talked about it. I woke up this morning. I didn't get much sleep, so I hype myself up in my pre-opener, right? I, I make sure that I'm super excited and pumped up and to, to, to get to the office because I know the team, <clears throat> the team has my back. And even though I may kind of, you know, be working my way up to get to the point of an ultimate 10 that we talked about, I may be at a 6 when I wake up. Then I get to a 7 after I shower. Then I get to an 8 after I watch this crazy guy named Paul Shakuri online <laughs> screaming in front of his computer saying, knock on doors, get excited, yada, yada, yada. And now I went to 9 and I got in. The managers, the black shirts got me from a 9 all the way up to a 10. I'm pumped. I'm excited. <gasps> And what do we got to do? We got to keep that level. Remember, knock on the door. Somebody doesn't, get, doesn't uh, get, I don't get to deal with that one person. What do I do at the next door with my energy? I say it again. I double it up. 
And if I screw up on that door, who cares because there's a million other doors. What do I do at the next door? Now if we double it up instead of decreasing it, what happens to our sales? Do we get it? The result, the end one, the R. Okay, and when we get results, do we use more of our potential or less? More. End of the day, that's what it's about. It needs to be real to you guys and gals. And when it's real to you that you can go out and get those deals, that you can go out and close those accounts, use more of your potential, and when you use more of your potential, it's that circle and cycle. Then you get to the point where you're like, you know what? I know I can do this and go out there and close one in every three homeowners. What's next? Black shirts, right? You end up getting to ultimately to that black shirts and you're able to pass it on to other people. And that, my friends, at the end of the day is the reason why I fought in and stuck in with this because I knew at the end of the day, if I were to master this, that one day I'd be able in my office to train and teach. To date, I now train and teach over 10,000 people all over the world every single day how to master the art of door-to-door -door sales, which I thought at one point was not real and possible to actually even help myself out. One, really. I remember my first door I knocked on. So why did I want to do that? Because anybody who, just like myself and my wife, was sleeping on an air mattress when we started off. You know, uh, uh, Brandon said, who in here has been homeless? On my life, when I moved with the story I told you to Windsor, one day I was homeless. I slept in my car. My buddy, who's a multi-millionaire, who has a mansion, heard about it. And he goes, Paul, where are you at? He, mansion, multi-millionaire. He goes, where are you at? He goes, I heard that you're, 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 you left your, your family's house and uh, you're, you're, you're sleeping in your car? Are you insane? I'm like, no, man, I got myself a hotel room. I knew that if I got myself in that situation, because at the end of the day, I got myself in that situation, that I need to get myself out. I don't take the easy route out. Although the easy route out sounds awesome because you're not going to put yourself in going through those emotions of all that crap. I swear on my God-given right, I slept in that car because I wanted to make sure that was the only and last day that that ever happened. What's the second day? I didn't know what was going to happen the next day. What did I do? Believe it or not, I went and seeked out a church that actually I slept in for close to finishing up the end of what I told you guys, my actual uh, degree of getting that before I told you the story of what's going to happen, what happened ultimately going back. It was something that I had to do. So when your why comes out strong enough to why you want to actually accomplish, not just go out there and knock on deals so you can pay, you know, rent and you can have a little car, when your why is so strong, that truck of yourself of just moving forward with 100% certainty will push you into learning and mastering this job that's so ever so simple, okay? So let's, uh, let's do it again. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> we also share something very similar. He's knocking in where I knocked and got this sun damage, Arizona. So when I started off, remember I told you guys I actually worked in Edmonton minus 60 with wind chills? What was awesome about that was I can keep myself warm with, with gear. Where he's knocking, you can't keep yourself cool unless you either get into a van or secondly, you get into a house. What was my choice? Get into a house. Because that's what's ultimately going to get me paid. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to him in Arizona like I know it. Okay, so I'm going to knock on his door and I'm going to feel him out. There's no scripted pitch. It's my opener. I got to create curiosity. First step is create that curiosity. How do I do it? We'll, fit, we'll find out. Typical salesperson starts talking, introduces themselves. Knock, knock, knock. Door's over here. First thing I do is I actually stand far back and I look busy. Second thing, when he responds to me, average salesperson, hi, how's it going? My name is, I'm not going to do that. Watch what I do. Uh, yeah, sorry, one second. Uh, you're the owner of the property here, right? Uh, yes, what's up? So, this was about a couple weeks ago. Uh, I sent a couple guys by, uh, with regards to some neighborhood advisory that we had taped to your door. Did you get it, did, did you get that, or was that your wife that, that got that? Uh, I have no opinion, I, I don't know. Oh, not here. oh, okay. You, you mentioned you were the owner of the property? Yeah, I just worked the last six, like. Gotcha. Okay, really quick, if you don't mind stepping... Yeah, if you don't mind stepping out here really quick. Now, 
do you know many, remember, control, right? Control, I'm feeling him out. When I'm talking to him, I'm looking at him, like I'm in the zone. Like I swear, I'm in the zone. Like I'm, I'm and I want to give you the, the feedback as I'm doing this. I'm feeling him out. Is he sensing that I'm a salesperson? Is he, I'm sensing him. I go, so do you know many of your neighbors over here? Yeah, I know Jim right there. I know Susie. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, you said, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Jim. Yeah. I know uh, Susie. Really nice people, by the way. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, this is actually a very good neighborhood. How long have you, you lived here for? I lived here for uh, five years. Oh, so wait a so second. Far. So, wait, five years? That means you actually got a really good deal on this house. I recall five years ago, the, the housing market kind of was, was that. Do you have some equity in this house? You're, you're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm go ahead. You're pretty cheap. <laughs> you're pretty cheap. No, I got the house pretty cheap. Oh, which is. Equity is not nice. So, it, so it's increased. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Yeah, um, I just, I got to let you know, I got to be really quick. Um, I do have a couple of appointments up the street here. But how many of, and not necessarily just our signs, but how many of these signs have you noticed up and down your street here? I want to drive to work. A couple of signs down the street, one on a corner house. Sure. I like them. Sure. And what do you know about our, our company and our brand? Uh, ADT. I mean, I know you guys are secured. I see the little commercial with the guy. Little? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, little, but that guy's, <laughs> guy's pretty big. huge, He's Vince. Big. Absolutely. So I'm going to be really quick. You see this sign? Uh, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind coming over here, I need this sign to be right here. Remember, not just I need a sign anywhere. I need this sign to be right here in front of your yard. Um, but before we get into that, I need you to understand why we need that. Is that fine? If we were to put this sign right over here, well, first of all, would that be fine with you? I mean, but what do I have to do? I mean, oh, you have to give me close to like about, I think it's $15,000. Um, but the sign, what, I'm playing <laughs> no. with you, buddy. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, this sign over here, would that be fine if we actually placed it right here in front of your, your tree? I mean, if you want to just do free advertising for me, I mean, like, you can keep the sign out, but that's, okay. right, that's it, right? Uh, yeah, so, so the sign doesn't bother you is what you're trying to tell me, right? No, the sign's not bothering me, no. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I get where you're getting with it. You're thinking that if the sign's there, there's going to be something, some hidden catch, and let's be honest with ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah, so what's kay. up? <laughs> yes, so this sign, and of course I need to make sense of it to you. And by the way, like I said, I'm really busy. I do have a couple of appointments to go to. But this sign helps our company generate revenue. And now I need to ask you a question. Do you know how this sign, let me grab that really quick. If this sign was right here in front of your property, do you know how that sign would help our company generate revenue? Well, I mean, you got the number and uh, website on it. So. Correct. So it's advertising for our company. Oh. Now, now, because you would help us, and by the way, you said five years, okay, you've had this. So, would you say a couple of people on the block at least kind of know you or know you as the good guy or kind of as the, the dick? No, I'd say, say the good guy. I'd say the good guy. Okay, okay, or a jerk? No, I think he's pretty much the good guy. <laughs> it's important. No, it really is yeah. important. Now, I'm going to be quick, like I said, but this sign, if you help us promote our actual sign right there, see what happens is this. And by the way, what's your name? Nate. Nate, I'm Paul. What's your name? I just introduced myself, okay? I just introduced myself. Remember, you guys won before you knocked on the door. But in reality, we thought in the back of our head that we didn't win when we knocked on the door because we're, right? That's what we thought in the past. What is the first thing we want to do is create curiosity when they knock on the door. Who is this person? We have curiosity. The problem is sometimes we lose that curiosity by sounding like the typical salesperson who knocked on their door. Don't. Make it a habit today. Do not introduce yourself till two to three to four minutes in, okay? Because you're keeping them like, who is he? What is he with? What is he doing? That curiosity, you want to carry it so we can build a relationship. Remember, it's all about building that relationship. And when we build that relationship with them, because if people like you, they'll talk to you. If they trust you, they'll do? If they like you, they'll talk to you. If they trust you, they'll do business with you. How can I sell somebody who doesn't like or trust me? I got to get that like and trust factor. So basically the sign, by putting in front of our yard, you're going to be advertising for us. So what's going to happen is now when your neighbors are actually walking up and down the street, they're going to take a look at if let's just say they were looking to get an alarm system, they're going to look and they're going to see ADT, 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 ADT. Okay, now the people who actually do see these ADT signs popping up often, what happens is eventually we get a lot of phone calls off that. So if you were willing to help us place the sign in the yard, what we're going to do in reality is we're going to compensate you. So we'll actually take care of you and this house. But I do need that commitment from the sign. Do you have any issues with that sign? I do have to ask one last time. No, the, the sign's fine, but so like what's, I mean, yeah, what's the monthly? Uh, the monthly actually depends based on whatever it is you have. Uh, what is it you have? 
Uh, do you mean, what do you mean? Oh, I'll show you. Come over here really quick. <laughs> so your front door, when you got the house, was it wired or was it not? Uh, no wiring. No wiring, no wiring at all. Perfect. Then on the inside of the actual door frame, uh, right over here on the other side, uh, what, do you know what type of, was it, was it made from pine? What type of wood was that made from? Mahogany. Mahogany. So, perfect. But having, it, having said that, you see this door contact? Do you, do you know the model and how this kind of works and functions? Um, I know that it's supposed to be like magnets. So like no, it's a little different. Yes and no. So this basically what I'll do is I'll just show you on the front door. Okay. All I want to do is show you on the front door how this would actually work. And then that way, because I have my appointment, you don't mind if I obviously step in and just show you on that front door? I mean, can't you just show me right here? Uh, yeah, I can. That's exactly what I can do. But just, the, okay. So how this, okay. So basically on now, when, okay. So on the, okay. So when you put it, It'll, it, okay, it's kind of hard to do like that. Do you mind if I actually just show you the other side of the door? Yeah, why not? It'll take a second. I mean, like, okay, boom. I, I, see, I see all the, the time saying we got to go, so. But I'll continue to go in from there, okay? Um, and then keep going back and forth. At the end of the day, it's not what you say. It's how you present yourself and how much control of the sale you hold. And I don't mean rude control. You're not going to go out there and say, dude, F this guy, F you this. Never fight with a customer. When you fight with a customer, you've lost. Our goal is to stick behind the brand and make sure that we're always presenting it in the best way possible. Um, we ran out of time. I want to thank everybody so much for listening. And today, two o'clock.